Welcome back to my channel. Okay, let us continue the recap of Roshideri Light Novel, Volume 4.5, Part 2. Before we dive into Volume 5, we are going to cover this special Volume 4.5 comma, which showcases Alia-san's perspective and other characters during their radiant summer adventure. So, Volume 4.5 is kind of like a breather before the major conflicts begin in the next volume. Now, in part two, the story is about how Masachika cannot study with Alia because he has to visit his grandfather's house in the Kuzi family. They are separated once again, but this is where the small moments make the story even more interesting. Let us dive deeper. So, when Alia was all ready for their usual study session, Masachika suddenly said that he could not make it. Alia was a bit confused and slightly disappointed because they had a routine of studying together. However, after hearing Masachika's reason, Alia tried to understand, even though deep inside, she felt like something was missing without Masachika around. This time, Alia went to the food market alone. Her goal for going there by herself was to visit the spicy restaurant she had previously gone to with Masachika and Yuki. Now, if you remember, back then, Masachika and Yuki were out walking when they accidentally ran into Alia at their favorite spicy restaurant. In the end, the three of them decided to eat together. However, Alia could not handle spicy food at all, but because of her pride in front of Masachika, she forced herself to join in. And the result? Well, you can guess, it was a total disaster. So now, Alia wanted to return to that spicy restaurant, but this time with one goal, to practice eating spicy food. So that next time, if Masachika wanted to eat at his favorite spot again, Alia would not have to be embarrassed because she would be used to it. But of course, Alia's pride as a sundere would never let her admit that this was all for Masachika. In her heart, she kept reasoning, ah, this is just to expand my food options, it has nothing to do with him. Classic sundere, right? After gathering her resolve for quite some time, Alia finally arrived at the entrance of the spicy restaurant. With mixed feelings of fear and curiosity, she bravely stepped inside. The moment Alia set foot in the spicy restaurant, she was immediately hit by the sharp, pungent aroma that stung her nose, causing her eyes to tear up instantly. Alia could not help but recall the terrible experience she had the first time eating here with Masachika and Yuki. Back then, she really struggled to handle the spiciness, but her pride made her pretend like everything was fine. Before she even had a chance to sit down, Alia almost lost her resolve and thought about backing out. However, her desire to be on equal footing with Masachika, so she could stand by his side whenever, pushed her forward and helped her brush aside all her fears. She was determined not to give up this time. As Alia was looking for a place to sit, her eyes suddenly fell on a familiar figure. The girl sitting alone in the corner was Ayano. Naturally, Ayano immediately noticed Alia's arrival. With a bit of hesitation and awkwardness, Alia walked over and finally asked for permission to join Ayano. With a brief response, Ayano simply nodded without much expression. The situation suddenly felt awkward. Alia and Ayano just stared at each other without a single word being spoken. Alia felt confused about how to start a conversation, especially considering that they were rivals in the student council president election. But on the other hand, Alia thought, If I can be good friends with Yuki, there is nothing wrong with trying to be friends with Ayano too, right? Alia finally mustered up the courage to break the silence with a simple question, What did you order, Ayano? However, just as Ayano was about to answer, her dish was already served in front of her. Without needing a verbal response, Alia instantly knew that Ayano had ordered the super spicy ramen, even spicier than the one Alia had ordered with Masachika and Yuki before. Seeing Ayano's order, Alia's competitive nature kicked in. At first, she had planned to order the same dish as last time, but after seeing Ayano take on an even bigger challenge, Alia felt compelled to do the same. I cannot lose, Alia thought. So, without hesitation, Alia decided to order the same ramen as Ayano, hoping to get used to the spiciness faster. While waiting for her order to arrive, Alia observed Ayano eating quickly and looking extremely calm, as if the super spicy food was nothing to her. However, the reality was different. Deep down, Ayano was overwhelmed by the spiciness and was on the verge of tears. 
But why would Ayano, who clearly could not handle spicy food, choose to eat at a place like this? The answer was simple. Just like Alia, Ayano wanted to train herself to eat spicy food so she could eat with her master, Yuki, without any issues in the future. Yes, both Alia and Ayano were trying to get used to spicy food for the sake of someone else. They did not want to appear weak in front of the people they cared about. Ayano, even though she was close to giving up, fought hard to maintain her neutral expression. She did not want to embarrass Yuki by being a servant who could not handle spicy food. As you already know, Ayano is incredibly loyal and always wants to protect her master's image. With that thought in mind, Ayano continued eating, fighting back her tears while finishing off the super spicy ramen in front of her. On the other hand, Alia observed Ayano, who seemed so calm while devouring her super spicy ramen. Alia started to panic a little, as she felt her only hope of having a friend, who also could not handle spicy food, had disappeared. Alia imagined that if Ayano could eat spicy food so casually, how could she possibly lose? Not long after, Alia's order finally arrived. The strong aroma of spice immediately filled the air, making Alia's face feel like it was burning even before she touched her food. However, due to her high sense of pride, Alia refused to back down. She immediately began eating her ramen. The result? A total disaster. The intense spiciness exploding in her mouth felt like it was burning her tongue. But unwilling to appear weak, Alia forced herself to keep eating while holding back the tears that were on the verge of spilling. Meanwhile, Ayana was also struggling hard against the same spicy sensation. However, due to a misunderstanding, the two of them ended up in what felt like a silent competition to see who could endure the spiciness better. It was like an unspoken contest that neither of them realized. Ayano kept eating without showing any expression, while Alia tried her best to stay calm, even though her tongue was nearly numb. Not long after, Ayano managed to finish her meal. Seeing this, Alia was utterly shocked. Ayano's food was gone, while there was still a bit of ramen left in Alia's bowl, but the spiciness was only getting worse. Suddenly, without realizing it, Alia began to feel weak and eventually fainted at her seat. Yes, one could say Ayano won that unspoken competition. When Alia woke up, she found herself resting on Ayano's lap outside the restaurant. Ayano explained that Alia had fainted earlier and was immediately brought outside to rest. Upon hearing this, Alia could no longer hide the truth and finally admitted that she really could not handle spicy food. Ayano, who had seemed calm all this time, let out a small laugh and spontaneously admitted the same thing. Ayano then told her that she actually could not handle spicy food either, but she wanted to learn so she could enjoy spicy meals with her master, Yuki. Hearing Ayano's story, Alia suddenly remembered Masachika's advice to start finding friends. At that moment, Ayano suddenly proposed something. How about we practice eating spicy food together from now on? Alia gave a slight smile and immediately nodded in agreement. At least now, she had a partner in enduring the spicy challenges ahead. On the other side, Masachika, who was at his grandfather's house, noticed the house suddenly becoming lively due to the arrival of guests. It turned out that his father, who had been working abroad for a long time, had finally returned. As soon as his father stepped into the house, Yuki, who was always cheerful, could not contain herself. With a wide smile, she immediately jumped and hugged her father tightly as if she did not want to let go. Her father returned the hug with a small laugh, looking relieved and happy to see his energetic daughter. Just like before, the small commotion caught the attention of Masachika and his grandfather. The two of them came out of the room, welcoming the father who had just returned from his long journey. Masachika, unlike Yuki, simply gave an indifferent glance while leaning back on the sofa. His father felt a bit sad seeing Masachika's aloof attitude, but he understood. Masachika was now a teenager and it was normal for him not to express affection in the same way as before. Trying to ignore that feeling, he shifted his attention to Masachika's grandfather, who was also his own father. Masachika's grandfather was known for being a bit flirtatious and comical. With his signature laugh, he asked, So, did you meet any sexy ladies while you were abroad? Masachika's father could only smile faintly, shaking his head in denial. Bewildered by his father's behavior, always joking about such things, 
But before the conversation could move on, Yuki quickly chimed in, adding fuel to the newly sparked topic. Yeah, Dad, do you have a new girlfriend over there? Yuki teased with a small laugh. It was not surprising considering that her father had already been divorced. Hearing his beloved daughter join in, her father felt a bit startled, but firmly denied the accusation. Not getting the confession she hoped for, Yuki pouted, and without thinking, jumped toward Masachika, who was relaxing on the sofa. She began bothering her brother, venting her playful frustration in her own cute and lively way. Seeing that, Masachika's father initially smiled in relief, watching his two children appear to get along so well. However, as Yuki clung so closely to Masachika, a wave of negative thoughts started creeping into his mind. He began to worry that perhaps Masachika and Yuki were too close. Masachika's father discreetly glanced at them, observing their behavior carefully, while trying to keep a positive mindset, hoping that this was just a harmless misunderstanding. To distract himself from his spiraling thoughts, their father casually asked about his children's dating lives. Both Masachika and Yuki answered in unison, saying that they did not have any romantic partners. However, Yuki's next words only made their father more uneasy. With a casual tone, Yuki said that she had no intention of finding a boyfriend anytime soon. Right after saying that, she leaped behind Masachika and hugged him tightly. Of course, Masachika immediately tried to free himself from his sister's embrace, especially when Yuki attempted to bite his neck. Seeing this, their father's mind once again started racing with inappropriate thoughts. But when Masachika gently pushed Yuki away to avoid her bite, their father tried to think positively again. Ah, they are just joking around, he thought. However, when Yuki pretended to groan in pain, and Masachika responded with care and concern, their father's negative thoughts resurfaced. This time, he became more convinced that their relationship might be too close, almost like that of a couple. In his confusion, Masachika's father fell silent, once again wondering, are they too close? So that's pretty much the content of this light novel, Roshi Dere, for this time. What do you think? If you enjoy stories like this, don't forget to share your thoughts in the comments below. 